are the ones that put the limits on God. Why? Because of our past experience. Because of the limitations of our past. I remember when we started in Kano in those days, people would come to church. No signboard, no advertisement. People would show up in church. Who told them? God. Say amen. Has he stopped being God? No. So who can release that? You know what I enjoy the most about God? I just enjoy releasing my faith. Hallelujah. I was telling somebody on the phone yesterday, I said, my faith is always on an errand. When it comes back, I send it again. Did you catch that? <laughs> so what is your faith doing right now? You better send it on errands. You know, I learned that from the Bible. It says when, you have, when your servant has gone to bring food, do you say, come and sit down? Won't you send it again? So I send my faith, go for more. So my faith comes and says, I've delivered this. I said, go for more. So I've delivered that. I said, go for more. My faith needs to be, needs to be active. If you don't, you see, the problem is that if you don't exercise yourself in the things of the Spirit, you'll never come to the place of rest knowing that it will work. That's why it's so strange to many people. You leave church, you live your whole life like you are a normal, physical human being, no uh, uh, relation with the Spirit realm. Then you show up in church. Church is going to be door. They are singing songs. Uh, what songs are these? I don't know. I don't know these songs. They are praying. Oh, no, 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 no. You are just saying, shum, 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 shum. you don't know what you're saying. But if you make a lifestyle of faith, then church means more to you. If you make a lifestyle of faith, then the word means more to you. But if you keep it away and say, that's my spiritual life, you put it in a cocoon, then this is my physical life, you put it in a cocoon. No, when I'm jogging on the treadmill, I'm listening to the word. Amen? When I'm doing anything, the word is entering. Why? The just shall live by faith. Not to keep faith in a cocoon. You must live it out every day. Amen. Say amen. amen. You must do what? And if you lay hands on the sick and they don't get healed, still lay hands on the sick some more. It doesn't say they get You see, we're not believing in healing because somebody got healed. We're believing because the Bible says so. I remember listening to one man of God. He said he laid hands on someone. The person dropped dead. He kept laying hands on the others. You see, I didn't believe that healing was possible because somebody got healed. I believed it because the Bible says so. <laughs> you see, when the guy dropped there, he said, well, he's gone home ahead of us, so let's go on. <laughs> I like that. I like radical guys. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So I want to challenge us today, you know. This is resurrection. My wife isn't saying so much about it. The more she talks about it, the more excited I get in my spirit. Why? Because it's so true. Say amen. It is so true. But the problem is, you and I have not worked or developed that consciousness of the truth of it. And so, when we talk about resurrection, you know what you are thinking about? Oh, resurrection. Oh, resurrection. Oh, religious activity there. Oh, resurrection. No, no, no. It's about you. Say amen. And watch this. Jesus died. Is it true? And for three days, what people don't know is that he actually went into the Hades, the Hades, hell itself. And he suffered the torment, the punishment, everything that was due to the human race. But the power of God came there and raised him from the dead. That power delivered him from everything Satan could throw at him. You know the secret? He never committed sin, so it was illegal for him to be there. <laughs> that was what the enemy fell for. He never committed sin. So it was illegal for him to be there. So justice demanded that he should be brought out. And the power of God raised him from the dead. That's why the Bible calls him the first to be born from the dead. He was raised from the dead by the power of God. And that same power is at work towards you. That's why they call him the firstborn amongst many brethren. That's the first born again experience right there. <laughs> he was born again because he became sin. He didn't commit sin. He became sin. And he bore it. And he went into the place of the damned. Do you know that if you read the New Testament, uh, the, the Matthew's account, he said he led some people. <laughs> those people don't know what happened in those three days. There was a place called the bosom of Abraham where all the Davids and co were. They couldn't go to heaven because the way to heaven was not made open. When he rose from the dead, he led them from that place into Amen. heaven. Abraham, David, all of them now could enter heaven 
because Jesus Christ paid the price and he led them into heaven. Is somebody hearing me here? We're not dealing with just man-made fables, you know, figment of somebody's imagination. We're dealing with reality. Amen. Is somebody hearing me here? He rose from the dead. Death could not hold him down. Amen. I said death could not hold him down. Amen. I said death could not hold him down. Amen. And when he rose from the dead, <laughs> he spoiled principalities and powers. He made an open show of them. That's why he could come back and say to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You go in my name. Wow. If you understood that, he will go in his name indeed. And you will have the confidence to do what he did. They said, the works that I do, you shall do also. Hallelujah. See, he's the firstborn from the dead. And that's why he's our elder brother. He's our high priest. He stands on the right hand of the Father. He knows what it means to be human because he was human. Now he can intercede on our behalf. Whatever problems we are going through, he knows about them. And the Bible says we're not, we don't have a high priest that is not touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Hallelujah. It's so real to me. Amen. And you know why it got so real? Because you, we spend time in it. You know what? If you want to know what you have your confidence in, whenever there's a crisis, what do you turn to? That's where your confidence is. And let me give you the secret of confidence. Whatever you spend your time in is where your confidence will lie. Simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. If you spend your time thinking about your work, that's where your confidence will lie. If you spend your time thinking about your money, that's where your confidence will lie. If you spend your time thinking about God, that's where your confidence will lie. Say amen. Well, let me just say this before, this part of the introduction. That, you know, we had prophetic word this year of restoration. Is that true? Demonstration. Is that true? Elevation. Is that true? You need to fellowship with those truths. Because God said that he wants to do that in your life. Whether he does it in your life or not, it's not up to God. It's up to you. Am I talking to somebody? You see, a lot of things are up to us because we were created with the power of choice. Say Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that you and I cannot do. We're going to get into the word and see that. Because there are things he does through us. Everybody say through us. There are things he does for us. Everybody say for us. And there are things he does at a corporate level. <laughs> you see, I, I checked a lot of miracles in the Bible. A lot of breakthroughs. You know, this is our month of breakthrough. Is that true? I see that there's, there are things that you and I may not be able to accomplish within our own sphere of influence. But if we're in the right relationship with the right people, the power of God comes through for us. That's what Peter had when he was in prison. Say amen. How many of you know Peter was sleeping when the angel came? Do you know it takes a lot of faith to sleep when they want to kill you? Talk to me. Do you know that? It's a lot of faith to sleep. That means the guy came to a point where he said, you know what? Lord, I commit this into your hands and go to sleep. So he was in faith. But he couldn't deliver himself until they prayed. So there was a corporate dimension to that miracle. Is somebody hearing me here? Are you ready for this? Because we're talking about expressing the God of the breakthrough. And we're going to look into the scriptures and see how God wants to do it. Because how God does things for people. Say amen. But even though he does it for them, they're still in faith. There are things you and I cannot do in our own strength. But we can stay in faith and God will do it. There are some things you and I will have to participate with God for it to happen. And there are things where just being in a corporate environment, a corporate faith will get it done. 